As much as going to a gym can really help stay healthy and active, you really don't need to be spending time in a gym. A lot of these things you can actually do from home and stay active and healthy without ever going backwards in your own health and fitness journey. So we're here to help you kind of find some things that you can do while you're at home that are really simple and don't require any equipment. So one of the best at-home movements you can do is actually to squat. So squat is one of the most functional movements as it really works a lot of the low body, but really the full body, range of motion, and your actual mobility as well. So I'm gonna have Nicole do a really good squat here. Awesome, Nicole, great job. I'm gonna talk through, there's four components to a good squat. First is her stance, about shoulder width apart with her feet, which is great. Then I'm gonna have her go to the bottom of the squat and show you the other three. So Nicole will go to the bottom, Notice that her knees are coming out, so they track where her toes are. Her back is nice and flat, and her hips are as low as they can go to keep that good position. You can stand up, Nicole. If you can bring your hips below that knee crease, it's gonna be best for hip function. Some poor things in a squat or some common faults would be rounding the back on the toes, knees forward. We're gonna have Nicole try those out to show. Okay, even on your toes, Nicole, too. So it's kind of really hard. You can stand up, Nicole. So as you're kind of rounding or on the toes or knees buckling, there's different areas that are kind of challenges are not helpful in your squat. Nicole, will you finish with another good one for me? Awesome, looks great. If you have any challenges with regards to the squat or possibly doing this in a free area without any other assistance, check out our adaptive video where we'll kind of cover how you can work on these if you have any potential adaptation or limitations. So another great at-home movement for you to be able to do to stay healthy and active is a push-up or a pressing motion. So we're gonna have multiple variations of how to do this and what to focus on best. Nicole and I are gonna show you different levels with that. So we're gonna go down towards the ground. What we wanna do, I'm gonna show first, what we can do for a full push-up is having the hands about shoulder width apart, bringing our chest all the way to the ground and our arms to lock, but we want the elbows to stay in a little bit towards the side as opposed to flaring outwards, which we'll show in a little bit. So a full one, be like so. I press to the ground and try to press out. Those are really, really difficult. Nicole has a little bit of a shoulder kind of issue at times. So for her, it works really well to go from her knees, just like so, chest towards the ground, pressing out. One more for me, Nicole. Awesome. So she does a great job there. You can come on out of that, Nicole. She does a great job there, and this is really great for pressing strength overall. What we want to do too is make sure we're getting the full range of motion all the way down to the chest and all the way to lock. So we actually develop all the muscles through the shoulder as opposed to really short variations of the push-up. So what we can do as well is modify it even further. We can go up to like a chair or a table, like so, and Nicole can just raise the ground to try to get her body all the way down, touch her chest, and then arms locked. So she's getting that development through her shoulder. Good job, Nicole. You can come out of that. And then even lastly, if I turn this up, this could be kind of like a countertop or something higher, that this would even be better if that one were too difficult for you. Try one there, Nicole. Awesome. So again, the higher you go from the ground, the easier it's gonna be on the body or the less challenging. So if you can find that correct range of motion, that's how you'll help develop your pressing strength. Another good movement to do at home is the sit-up. So the sit-up can really help work on your abdominal strength along with generally all around your core as well. So what we have here is we actually have what's called an ab mat. This is actually a lumbar support or a low back support for when doing sit-ups. This is a really helpful thing so that it's actually not kind of irritated when you're doing a sit-up. If you don't have one of these at home, most people don't. All you can do is you can just take like a towel and roll it up and just put it under your low back and that's gonna make it do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna have Nicole have a seat just in front of the ab mat. And what she's gonna do is she's gonna bring her heels together in like a butterfly position and she's gonna lay all the way back, touch the ground with her hands, and then she can toss her arms and swing all the way to sit nice and tall at the top. Will you do another one for me, Nicole? Awesome. So she's doing a great job there. She can use the arms to toss to help her get up. If she doesn't, if it's too easy for her, she doesn't have to use her arms. You wanna show one of those, Nicole? Awesome. So those are some great ones for her there. She could even put her feet on the ground. This would get a little bit more of her hip flexors, might tighten up a little bit, but still a good way to do them. Will you show a good sit up there, Nicole? 
Awesome. So some common faults, there's not a ton of common faults in this one. You just might not be able to get up, which is okay. You could anchor your feet if that's the case. So we could put weights on her feet um, or we could just stand on them to help her kind of come up differently. Or the other one would be if she just couldn't get up enough. Will you show one, Nicole? So if she just can't get up enough, that's all right. You can work to a crunch or you can try to anchor the feet and that may help. So we'll show one more good one with the heels together, Nicole. Awesome. So this is again a great core movement that you guys can do. Roll up a, a towel under the lumbar and try it out. So a final great at home movement that you can do is actually called a deadlift. So a deadlift typically requires some weight. It's one of those movements that they say lift with your legs, not with your back. It's insanely functional because we need to pick up objects all the time. So lifting it correctly is going to be really important. What we actually have here is something you can utilize at home is just grabbing a backpack or a bag of some sort. You can add whatever weight or anything else you want into it and that'll help challenge it correctly for you. Really important with this is to, to step over the weight so it's underneath you or between your heels. Will you do that for me, Nicole? So she's gonna step all the way even more so it's between where about the handle is. And what she's gonna do is she wants to keep her back flat. She's gonna bend her knees as she goes down, keep her chest big and proud. And then when she stands, she's gonna stand all the way up, tightening her butt at the top. Nicole, will you do one more? Bringing it down and then standing. Awesome, you can relax it down for a second, Nicole. A little awkward with the bag at times, so you can kind of find how to balance that correctly. Some common faults would be just picking it up with a rounded back, and that's the main issue that most people see. Will you step over and show me that one, Nicole? Rounded back, so see how her back is rounded as she's standing up? That's just picking up with her back, and that's not gonna be ideal in the long run. So let's show one more good one, Nicole. Nice flat back, push with those legs, stand tall. Awesome, and then back down. Good job.